In this video, I'll be going over some trigonometry past paper questions, and in particular one that deals with the angles of elevation and depression. So in this question, we've got that RQ is a vertical pole. You can see that it makes a angle of 90 degrees with PS, which is a horizontal plane like the ground. The foot of the pole, Q, is on the same horizontal plane as P and S. The pole is anchored with wire cables RS and RP. The angle of depression from the top of the pole to point P, so remember R is the top of the pole, so here, to point P, so that angle, as indicated over here, is 47 degrees, angle of depression. PR is 21 meters, this length over here, and QS is 17 meters. QS is this little distance over there. They also give me the fact that RPQ is theta. The first thing they want to know is what is the size of this angle over here? What is the size of theta? I hope you can see that this is a horizontal line, which therefore means it will be parallel with PS. So these lines are parallel. I hope you can see the Z. So that means that this angle here, theta, would also equal 47 because of alternate angles. They don't ask for a reason, they just want to know the size, but just so you know, it would be alternate angles. Next, calculate the length of RQ. So they're looking for the length of this side within this triangle. So I want you to focus on this right angled triangle over here. When they're looking for a length, always isolate a specific triangle that you can potentially work in. We are trying to look for a 90 degree triangle, a right angle triangle, one where we know one of the angles. So we know that this is 47. If we did not know this angle, say for example, they didn't ask me beforehand what theta was, I would still have to consider working in this triangle or maybe you could have thought of the other one, but I know I would be able to work out, oh, this is alt angles, so therefore this is 47, therefore it makes sense to work in this little triangle over here, the one that is currently highlighted, and not necessarily this triangle over here, because I don't have an angle in that triangle. You can't assume that because this angle is 47, that this angle would also be 47. We don't know if this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, so we're going to work in the highlighted triangle. We're looking for RQ, which is this length over here. We have this length, which is 21, and we have this angle. So we can't do Pythagoras because you can only do Pythagoras if you have two lengths. So for example, if I had this length and this length, then yes, I would be able to do Pythagoras. But at the moment, what I can do is some sort of a trig ratio because here's my angle. I'm looking for the side opposite the angle. Can you see here's, here's 47? I'm looking for this question mark side, which is opposite, opposite. So I'm looking for the opposite. And then the other side that I have in that right angle triangle is opposite the 90 degrees. Here's the 90. It's there. That means that the 21 meters is the hypotenuse. And which trig ratio, I have the hypotenuse, it's 21. Which trig ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? Remember, so katoa, so katoa, or ohal, another hour of algebra. Sin is opposite over hypotenuse. So sin of my angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. My angle in this case is 47. Here's my angle over here. There's 47, put it in the place of the angle. What is opposite that angle? RQ, it's my unknown. Here's my opposite. RQ is my opposite. My hypotenuse is 21. It's PR or RP. To solve for RQ, you want to do the opposite of divide by 21. Currently we are dividing by 21, which is multiplying by 21. So 21 multiplied by sin 47, that's going to get me RQ. So RQ is therefore 15, 36. My calculator gives me 15, 3584, blah, 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 blah. If you round that off to two decimal places, it's going to be 15, 36 meters. This is in meters, so your answer here is going to be in meters. They then say, hence, calculate the size of S. When they say hence, in a math question, they mean that you must use what you previously calculated. So we previously calculated this here, 15 comma 36. So we're looking for the size of S, angle S. So they've already given me a hint by, say, a hint by saying hints. So we know we're going to use this side. We're looking for this angle. So now suddenly our focus has shifted into this triangle over here. This is also a 90 degree triangle because this angle over here, R, Q, S, 
must also be 90 degrees because of angles on a straight line. If this one is 90, this one over here is also going to be 90 degrees. So it's a right angle triangle. Take note, they're not looking for a distance. So they're not looking for RS. If they were to look for this distance here, we could do Pythagoras because I have this length and I have this length. But they're not looking for the length. What they're looking for is the angle. So when you're looking for an angle, we are going to be using trigonometry. We're looking for S. Now, in the green triangle, what sides do I have relative to S? Do I have the hypotenuse? Take a look. Here's the 90. Remember, ignore this triangle now. Here's the hypotenuse. Yeah, this one is called, remember, opposite the 90 is the hypotenuse. Do I have the hypotenuse? No. That means out of so Katoa, so Katoa, sin uses opposite and hypotenuse, so I can't use sin. Cos uses adjacent and hypotenuse, I can't use cos. That means I'm probably going to have to use tan. Let's see if it works. Tan is opposite. So let's erase that. Tan is opposite. Do I have the opposite? Yes. The opposite is 15,36 over adjacent. This is the adjacent, 17. So I'm going to use tan of S. Remember, it's always the trig ratio, tan of an angle. Okay, cos of an angle, sin of an angle. So it's tan of the angle S is equal to what is opposite S? 1536 what is adjacent to S? Adjacent means next to 17. When you are looking for an angle, you need to press shift tan on your calculator. So you press shift tan and then type in your fraction. And I get that angle S is equal to 42. Remember two decimal places. My calculator says 42,0987. If I chop it off at two decimal places, this nine must go one up. So it's 42, 0, 9. It must go up. So it's going to be 42, 10. And that's going to be in degrees. Our last question here. If P, Q, and S lie in a straight line, which we said in the beginning they do, how far apart are the anchors of the wire cables? If you read the story carefully, they say the pole is anchored with wire cables, R, S. Okay, there's my one wire cable there. It's anchored there and RP. It's anchored there. So what this question wants to know is how far apart are the anchors? There's my one anchor at P. There's my other anchor at S. They want to know how far apart are these two. So basically, what is the distance of PS? That is what we're looking for. And you might say, oh, ma'am, well, we already have QS is 17. Yes, you're right. So Q from here to here is 17. But to find the total distance, this whole distance, I first need to also find how far PQ is. I hope you agree that PS is made up of PQ plus QS. Okay, PQ is here. I don't know what that is. Plus QS, that's over here, 17. When I add those together, it's going to give me the distance between the anchors, P and S. So my first step is I need to find the length of PQ. Now, remember, we actually already have some of these answers. I erased them. We have that's 47, and this is 15,36. We can actually, and I know a lot of you will be thinking this in this triangle, if I want to look for PQ, you might say to me, ma'am, can't I just do Pythagoras? Of course you can, because it's a 90 degree triangle. I have that, that length, I have that length. I can find PQ using Pythagoras. But because this is a trig pass paper and I want us to practice trigonometry, I want you to think of a different way that I can find PQ using trigonometry. And I want you to think about how could you find PQ, let's pretend, even if you didn't have this length over here. Yes, you can use that one. But if, I, if you just had the 21, so basically, if you didn't do any of the previous questions, except you know that this is 47, you know that, and you know this is 21, this is 47, how do you find PQ? Well, if I want to use the 47, I will say, well, I've got the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is 21. This is the hypotenuse. And I also know that I'm looking for PQ, which is adjacent. It's next to the 47. So adjacent and hypotenuse. What trig ratio is that? Adjacent over hypotenuse is cos. Remember, so ka toa. So ka, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to work out cos 47. It's always trig ratio angle. Cos of the angle is equal to what is adjacent, what is next to 47? PQ over the hypotenuse, which is 21. 
Then I take the 21 over. That's bad mass language. We say we're dividing by 21. The inverse of divide by 21 is times 21 like that. That gets me PQ. I get 14,321965. Don't round this off yet. It's not my final answer. I'm still busy in the question. So remember what I just calculated, PQ is this distance over here. I ultimately want from here to here. So I need to add that I, the thing I just calculated, 14,321965. I must add that to 17. That's going to get me my total distance. So if I add 17, my final answer for PS or for the distance between the anchors is 31,32 meters. I hope you found that helpful. I can't wait to see you in another video. Bye everybody and subscribe if you haven't yet.